Hey, welcome to my Pisces Priestess channel, everybody. Um, welcome to October. It is October. Um, and for this month, I definitely wanted to... Holy crap, the wind is blowing love. Strong out there. <laughs> um, I'm looking out the window, but yeah. I wanted to do an intro video this month, guys, um, because it's a really intense month. October is just... Uh, this is just a very, very transformative time of year. And I thought it would be easiest just to kind of speak to everybody. So hello, everybody, all the signs. How are you guys doing? So yeah, I got some notes here about October. And um, also, we're going to do, um, I mean, I'm, I moved. I didn't mention that yet, but I have moved. Um, lots have been changing for me. Very intense energies. So I want to apologize for getting these videos out late. I'm not really sure when I'll get, um, get them uploaded because I don't have any Wi-Fi still. But I have a very peaceful environment and nice environment to record in. And that helps me, it helps my um, intuition and my spirituality a lot. So, yeah. Um, there was a lot of intense energies in the beginning of October for me. Um, we had that full moon a couple of days ago on the 5th. And I'm not really sure when these will get uploaded. But uh, that's why the videos are so late. Because I am very sensitive to stuff like that. It's just been... I mean, October was, it's almost like I woke up in a new life, you know, just to be honest. But I still love tarot and I still love astrology. So this is what I want to do. I'm getting my office all set up. This is my little room, spiritual room. I have my zodiac wheel over here, but it's a mess. I guess I can show you guys, but I'm going to be doing some recording by that. So we definitely have all of the zodiac energy present with us right now. And I've got all my little things. So that just makes me more comfortable. And yeah, guys, so we're going to do it a little bit different this month. That's why I'm just going to record an um, intro video so that everybody can see. Because um, sometimes I say certain things for certain signs and then I forget to say it for other ones. So yeah, just we're going to record an intro video. I've never done it like that. Um, and we have a different kind of reading coming for October as well, guys. Um, so first, let's just go over a little bit of, and I will mention this in, um, in, in certain videos, but October. Okay, October 2017, I've written down some of the major aspects I think that are happening. Um, and we have that Aries full moon on October 5th. That was a very powerful moon. Um, it was a couple days ago. It was very, I live in Michigan, so it was very cloudy here and I couldn't see the full moon. Some of my friends who were in other parts of Michigan, they saw it and the pictures were amazing. I had a Sagittarius hit me up and say that the moon was so big in the morning. Not even surprised because Aries is our first zodiac sign. They're the first house of self. So I, as an astrologer and as someone who's spiritual, have been waiting for this Aries moon for so long. We only get an Aries full moon once every Libra season, so once every year. Very, very powerful. Anytime anything travels through Aries, you know, Pisces is the sign right before Aries, kind of, because we're the 12th house, so we're last, and then Aries is first, so Aries and Pisces kind of chill together on the zodiac wheel, and we have a special uh, bond as um, last and first. It's kind of a completion that happens, so when things pass through Pisces and they complete, and they pass through Aries, it's brand new, okay? And the, the moon travels around the zodiac wheel all the time, but it was full in Aries now. So full moons mean completions and new beginnings, and Aries means completions and new beginnings. So this moon was so powerful, and it definitely has set some energies in place of transformation. It's just amazing. So we did have that, of course, on the 5th for Aries. And we all have Aries in our chart somewhere. Oh, also on the 5th, um, we had Venus and Mars in couple in the sky together, which is the divine masculine and the divine feminine. And I, I hadn't always known about that, but as an astrologer, a very, very novice astrologer right now, but um, every day I'm, you know, following the planets and, and checking birth charts, things like that. And I'm learning more and more about these planets and what they mean to to us to as humans on this earth so venus and mars masculine they're the divine lovers the cosmic soulmates and they were coupled together they only do that every two years and every 32 years they repeat exactly so 32 years ago i think it was um yeah it was the same day it was october 6 1985 i want to say venus and mars were coupled together and they were coupled together in virgo so very very beautiful energy for october 5th a lot of completions and new beginnings um on the 19th we have a libra new moon okay so that's gonna it's gonna be different for all of us but new moons are when the moon is invisible in the sky so this is you know some hidden secrets coming out and it depends on where libra is in your own chart 
but we do have that new moon. I hear that it's going to be, you know, kind of, kind of bizarre a little bit, but you know, uh, it should be okay. Just something to look out for on the 19th. This is when the sun and the moon are in the sky together. That's why we can't see it because the sun and the moon are in the same, they're going to both be in Libra. Um, and then we have Jupiter moving into Scorpio on the 10th. Okay, I'm excited about this. Um, Jupiter is my traditional ruler. Jupiter is the ruler of Sagittarius. So, you know, as a Sag or a Pisces, and actually everyone, you really want to look out for this because Jupiter moving signs is something that is so, it's like a hot topic in astrology right now. And that's happening on the 10th. It's going into Scorpio. Like, whoa, everyone, this is the planet of higher philosophy, um, higher thinking. It rules the ninth house. So your beliefs and things like that. So we want to be focusing on these things around the 10th. This is so awesome, guys, for Jupiter to be moving into Scorpio. And then um, on the 14th, we have Venus entering Libra, which is so cool because Venus is ru rules Libra. Libra rules our relationships. It's the seventh house of partnerships and, you know, not just romantic, but friendships and all of that. So Venus is going to come there, the goddess of love. And she's very, very at home with the, the scales of justice, Libra. So definitely something to look forward to on the 14th. And then we have Mercury moving into Scorpio on the 17th. I definitely want to take note of that. You know, that is, it all depends on where Scorpio is. Um, on the Zodiac Wheel, you know, we all, we all can tell where the houses are, but we also have our own birth charts. I'm not sure if many of you who watch my videos also have your own birth charts. So for me as an example, I have a Midheaven Scorpio and my North Node is Scorpio. So Mercury moving into that, is, you know, Scorpio is my sister sign. Um, Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces, they're all water signs. So yeah, definitely really, you know, in, important for all of us. You know, you'd have to know your own birth chart, but these are the energies going on in the universe. Definitely some shifts going on, guys. And then, of course, the sun enters Scorpio twenty on the 23rd. We're going to have Scorpio season, which I feel like is so awesome because, you know, Halloween falls into Scorpio. I mean, you know, it's in Scorpio season every year. And Scorpio is, you know, mysterious and um, more so about the, 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 the hidden emotions that we have and, and kind of the intimate secrets. And Halloween is mysterious like that, too. So, yeah, speaking of Halloween, on the 31st, we have Halloween. So those are the notes that I wrote down for October. I wanted to make sure everyone heard those, so I wanted to do this as an intro video. All of you, all this whole video will be in the beginning of all the other videos, and I didn't want to make it over 10 minutes. So it looks like we have, you know, some time to talk about the actual reading that we're going to do this month, okay? I'm going to be a little bit different, guys, and I'm going to be trying some new camera angles out, so let me know, you know, now that I have this new apartment and everything like that, the lighting is different, um, there's just certain energies, you know, I'm trying to feel it out, so this is my first, you know, as November and December and all that and the new year, I'll probably gradually find my way and where I want to record at and stuff like that, but, you know, I'm just going to mess around with it for October and see what's going on, but I am going to be using the Wisdom of the House of Night, um, this is my, you know, kind of most mysterious uh, deck, and I find that tarot readers are kind of diving into the kind of darker, mysterious reading. So I'm like, yeah, I'm going to use my Wisdom of the House of Night. And then, so we're going to do that for the main reading. And then we're going to pull some clarifiers with regular, you know, this is the Page of Cups if you're curious. But um, <laughs> yeah, we're going to just use my regular tarot. I miss my regular tarot. I actually, during the move, I was without them for about a week. And man, that was weird, guys. I'm, I'm really happy to have all my cards back and everything like that. So the reading, um, a lot of you may be familiar with Celtic, Celtic cross reading. Um, I have a reading that I kind of designed myself and I promise you it was before. It was when I first got my deck back in April. I kind of sat down and I just kind of designed my own reading and little did I know this was actually a reading. Like this is kind of something that makes me believe that I'm meant to read tarot because I, I actually... It's very similar to the Celtic cross, but I just call it a cross examination reading. So basically, um, I love these readings, you guys, because we have a core situation that spirit is able to to hone in on. So it's a six card reading. Oh, and I have my little angel shirt on just in case you didn't know or see what that was because it's Libra season, you know, archangels and stuff. Um, and I say that because I, I want to do this cross because um, I'm not religious at all. 
But, you know, crosses are, are often related to um, angel protection and things like that. So I wanted to do this cross examination. It very much looks like a cross. It's a six card placement reading. So, and I'm going to explain this more as I do your, your reading, um, but the, the middle card is the core is situation and spirit can choose any situation to, to talk to you about. I will know the reading when I see the, that card. I'll know that this is the core situation spirit wanted to choose. Then like anything in astrology, there's a south node and a north node. So I place a card right underneath the core situation because that is where you're coming from. That is the south node of what you're letting go of, okay? And then we have the north node, where you're going to, what is, what you, where you should aim for, you know, wh where you're going. And then the two, this is what's different. The Celtic cross, I believe the two on the side have different meanings, but for me as a reader, I like to um, hold these placements for what spirit has on your side, because it just, it's your foundation, you know, that's what I kind of figured out yesterday that it kind of means for me, is these two cards that make up the, the, the cross, it would be the foundation and what spirit has on your side, what's protecting you, your protected foundation, and I'll explain more of that in the individual readings. And then the sixth card is overall guidance, and then of course we have the um, the underlying energy, which is the bottom of the deck for you guys, but um, yeah, it's going to be a little bit different this month. I've never done cross-examination readings, and I'm going to try to do a different kind of, I'm recording on a laptop, so it's going to be kind of interesting to get it at an angle where you guys can see the placements. I think it's very important for you guys to be able to see where the cards lie, but I'm going to explain them and try to show them to the camera as best as I can, but all right, I'm really ready to get you guys' reading started. I had this whole day to record and kind of be creative and type tap into spirit. My intuition is recharged. I feel good. So I'm very ready. I hope you guys are ready too. This is your October reading. So let's get started with it, guys, and we'll see what comes up. Hey, Gemini. This is your October reading. And as I said, we're going to you know get some wisdom from the house of night and we're going to be doing a cross examination is what i call it reading um you might hear of them as a celtic cross but um, this is kind of something i thought i was making up we have the core situation here for you high priestess of air baby <laughs> yes gemini that is so awesome bear with me on the glare guys come on show gemini Show Gemini this high priestess of air. This is so cool for it to come out for you guys. Do you see her? So yeah, that's uh, off rip, you guys, is reading. And then that's the number six card. So very awesome. High priestess of air as the core situation. Thank you, Spirit, for showing them that. And then we have the south node. So where is Gemini coming from? What are they letting go of? Where are they coming from? What is the kind of the past for Gemini and um, the south node of this core situation? Um, this is for October 2017 for Gemini, the twins. And we're looking for a south node situation for them. Just one card to see best explain where Gemini is coming from in their past, what they're letting go of, where they're coming from. Maybe you guys are coming from somewhere very unique, but it don't bother me. I'm very patient. As I said in my uh, past videos, woo, I have some reversal cards. All right, well, we're gonna, I believe in spirit, so the right card will come out. Am I holding these upside down? One second, Gemini. Sorry. Just make sure. I don't really do reversals when it comes to these kind of readings, even though I do play the cards as I see. Let's get some very clear energy. Okay, Spirit is telling me to uh, cut the deck, which is fine with me. I'm just happy that High Priestess of Air came out for you guys. Loyalty, loyalty, loyalty. Loyalty, loyalty, loyalty. All right, so we have honesty. Wow, that is so beautiful. Okay, so let's get the North Node then. So where is Gemini 
going to? Where is, what is their north node of direction? Oh, wow. All right. So we have the invisible card that came out, which also came out for Taurus, you guys. I did Taurus's reading before you. And we definitely have some invisibility going on in the, um, which is so like suiting because it's going to be Scorpio season. And we have lust on the table as well. So some of you guys might have some invisible lust going on there. But now we're going to get what's on your side. Oh, wow. Okay. We have differences. Hello, the twins. And we have, you know, spirit always protects both sides. So for me in my readings, this card and this card right here is um, what spirit is protecting you with. And it's also the foundation you're coming from. So where, where is, we're looking for another card for Gemini. That would best explain what is protecting them. And what what is on their side? What is their foundation? We have differences. And I need one more card, please, Spirit, for the sign of Gemini. October. Okay, we have the Warrior. Another card that Taurus also has. Alright. Now. We have one more card, which is going to be Spirit's Protection, Overall Guidance for you, Gemini, for the month of October. And we had two fall out. All right, and that's interesting. We have Deceit and Trapped. So what I'm going to do, Gemini, is I'm going to show you these, and I want you to understand that, that Deceit and Trapped did come out for overall guidance. And that could mean several things, but I'm leaning more towards, since they fell out and kind of shot out, that I'm going to shuffle again and I'm going to get an overall guidance card for you, especially because two came out. So, you know, some of you Geminis, briefly, this this is just coming out for some of you. You could have been trapped in, in deceit. You could have been trapped with someone who was deceitful, something like that. Um, but this is overall guidance from spirit. So it's telling me that spirit was actually deceiving you and trapping you for a certain reason okay so whatever that may mean to some of you guys but we're gonna do this again spirit and i'm just looking for one card one card that can apply to gemini that the gemini's that watch my videos pisces priestess channel what is overall guidance for the sign of gemini for the month of october looking for a card that best fits this reading spirit for Gemini okay well the high priestess of fire came out so that's very interesting to me and then at the bottom of the deck we have fragments so there's a lot of similarities here between the Taurus video as well so whatever that may mean to some of you Gemini's and you can't see this card so I'm gonna move this just a little bit that way so you can see my painting that we have not hung up yet. <laughs> but I just want you to see this whole reading. You see how it's kind of like a cross. This is the core situation right here in the middle. And then we have the south node, the north node, and then what spirit is protecting you with, and then overall guidance. So let's talk a little bit about this high priestess of air. Um, please pardon the glare. High priestess of air. Why is there a high priestess of glare? Um, I'm trying to figure out a way. I think this is the best way to show you guys is kind of turn it or when I go backwards they kind of show up well they did um, there's a beautiful woman on this card you guys and I'm kind of sad I gotta find better camera angles there's like such a glare here but this is like the table I wanted to use so we have the high priestess of air coming up which is telling me that you know this is communication to me the high priestess of air in this deck is very much like the Queen of Swords or even the Justice card. It's a very Libra, Gemini, and Aquarius energy. So, you know, Gemini, this card came out for you guys. And it's like Libra season is really, you know, putting you in a position of powerful communication. You know, the High Priestess of Air, to me, is someone who has her emotions under control. You know, she may be feeling a lot, but she's communicating what she feels. And she is also in such a high position of communication that she may be communicating with other people about their feelings in a way where they're not losing themselves in emotion. You know, we have the high priestess of water, 
the high priestess of air high priestess of fire you know you do have the high priestess of fire here which i strongly believe is the aries energy for the aries moon but at the core the core situation is you gemini so it's very awesome that this card came out the way that it did because it's telling me that spirit wanted to talk directly to you about you and the way that you communicate um, and speaking of the way that you communicate, where you're coming from, the South Node, is a place of burning fire in honesty. This is the honesty candle. Um, this candle is kind of lit up. So, you know, in the past, Gemini, or in the South position of this reading, you're coming from a place of where you've really lit that candle of honesty. Something sparked in you to where you just kind of you became this position, you, you were put in this position to light this candle of honesty and burn with passion, you know. Um, they always say, you know, you can't handle the truth or something like that. Well, Gemini is the messenger of God. They are ruled by Mercury. You guys are ruled by Mercury. And to me, if I was a ruled by Mercury, I would just really want to be honest about things. And this is about being honest in a passionate way. And then you have the high priestess of air in the middle of your reading as well. So it's about communicating in an honest way and in a passionate way as well. I just feel like Gemini this month in October is really going to be put in a position of intellectual communication, you know, um, and it's just very interesting to me that this is honesty because it's, it's not only you being honest with people, but it's also about people being honest with you and I see here that the number 26 is above this card so I'm not sure what that might mean to some of you but the number if this is the 26th card in the deck six plus two is eight so it could be being honest about the dark about you being honest about you know that other twin that you guys have because we do have differences here coming up but differences is in a different position in your reading we're on the south node right now. So, you know, a lot of honesty coming in for Gemini, you know, with the high priestess of air. So honest communication, honest thoughts um, and feelings, you know, but more so thoughts and logic. So you're being honest about what you think. You're being honest about what you feel. Um, and if you're not Gemini, spirit is definitely um, encouraging you to do that this month in October. Um, because we do have your ruling planet entering Libra, okay? You're you're ruled by Mercury, and Mercury is going to enter, I'm sorry, not Libra. Mercury has already been in Libra. Mercury is going to enter Scorpio. So that is very interesting. So Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio. So that's your sixth house. Duh, because it's right before Sagittarius, which is your seventh house. So seven minus one is six. Yeah, so we're going to have... Mercury into your sixth house of Scorpio. We have Jupiter entering your sixth house of Scorpio. Um, then we have the Sun entering your sixth house in Scorpio, and that's on the twenty third. Venus is entering Libra on the fourteenth. So you know a lot of honesty here. Not not with that stuff, but I'm just saying a lot of reasons for honesty to come up in your reading. Gemini, you are the third house of communication. So I believe that's why the air, the high priestess of air is coming up for you because we are in Libra season right now and we're going to be in Libra season until the 23rd so we have a couple more weeks of this and Libra is the cardinal air sign okay and all air signs have to do with kind of intellect and communication they're the sword card I think I see you Gemini I, was, I don't know why but I was just kind of led and I do see you so we're going to put you on top just so that you're present and so that your energy can help me with the, this card you know, so yeah, going back to what I was saying though, we are in Libra season. Libra is your sister sign because it's Aquarius, Gemini, and uh, uh, Libra, Libra, Aquarius, Gemini, all air signs. Gemini, you're the mutable air sign though. So it's kind of like, you know, I'm a mutable water sign. Sagittarius is the mutable fire sign. Virgo is the mutable earth sign. And with mutable signs, it's like we can kind of change whenever we want to. We can kind of you know, we're extremely adaptable and extremely mutable. So we can kind of mutate into anything. So when I think of Gemini, especially with you being the twins, it's kind of like you are the master communicators and it's not really the length of what you say. You know, you don't have to like talk as much as I am on this video. Um, in fact, most of the Geminis I know 
say very little, but somehow accomplish saying so very much. Um, so it's not what you say this month, it's how you say it. And it's interesting, as I say that, I'm led to see the honesty card and the invisible card. Because we have the north node of your reading as invisible, where I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's this lady, she's kind of hiding behind her hair. Um, she's looking and hovering over a mirror. This is a mirror, it's kind of a portal. And when I was explaining this to Taurus, in the last video, when I would say portal, I kept thinking about you, Gemini. So it's very interesting that this will come up for you because you are a portal. So there's a portal of communication that you're entering in October because of Libra and because of Scorpio energy. And because you're the high priestess of air. Um, you're definitely hovering over a portal, okay? it's You're the portal. It's the portal of communication. It's the portal of transformation. And... It's a lot of portals, but the point is is that it's a completely different realm. So you may be figuring out how to communicate in a completely different way. The high priestess is just of air. The high priestess of air is just like so good at communicating, I want to say. And, you know, you have invisible. So what I was going to say about that is this honesty in this invisible card. It's, it's kind of interesting. Honesty and invisibility. Because... In this card, honesty is very much visible. You know, it's lighting its way. And then you're coming from a place of honesty in a place of fiery passion about being honest. You know, you might have been telling some people off. You know, Gemini, like you you could could be really um, being honest there, like kind of like really fiery and, and like the torch is lit. But there are certain things that are invisible in your north node. So it's like being honest about things that weren't able to be seen before. Um, and you're, you're headed towards this. So this is a place of invisibleness. This is a place of kind of going beyond behind the scenes, Gemini. And, you know, this all has to do with communication. So it's kind of like communicating in a way where you don't even have to be invisible. Do you know what I mean by that? As a Gemini, I really hope you do, because this is above me. Like, I'm just channeling your energy. I don't work with these kind of energies, but, you know, I'm really um, able to kind of dive into this kind of stuff. And she's invisible. So this kind of makes me think about the part of Gemini that they always keep hidden, because there is the two twins, and a lot of people don't know that about you guys, but you have, um, you know, kind of two sides to you. So you may need to kind of, you know keep one side hidden in October, aka Libra and Scorpio season, there is this invisibleness coming up, and this is your north node. So you're being honest about being invisible, or you're being honest about what isn't here, you know, and what I kind of feel about that is that some Geminis are actually going to be communicating about things that can't be seen, okay? You're going to be, like, you are being put in a position this month to be honest and be passionate about the things that can't be seen. Do you know what I mean by that, Gemini? Like, things that aren't real, okay? And I'm a Pisces, so you know what I mean by that. Like, I believe everything's real, you know? But you know what I mean. Like, certain logical people, they think if, that you have to see it to believe it. And I think this month, Gemini is really going to be the advocators of that. Like, you're going to really be stepping up. So if you have a message of some sort... To speak about, you know, if it's something that only you think, because we do, we also have fragment at the bottom of your reading over here, and oh, we have obedience right underneath that, which is a very Libra card. She has a balance scale in her hand. This is very much like the Two of Swords, kind of, because she has the blindfold. And she, well, it's more so um, the Justice card, because she has a sword in one hand and balance in the other. And that's, you know, fragment. It's behind fragments. And fragments, to me means kind of being here kind of not and then we have this kind of being here kind of not with this invisibility so gemini you're kind of like a houdini right now you know and more power to you but just make sure you're you're coming from a place of honesty because it's all about what you say this month with the high priestess of air and then we're going to move on now to the what's on your side spirit says that your differences you, excuse me, your differences are on your side this month, Gemini. And we had another sign. This must be Aries. Aries? Yeah, Aries had this card come out. Whatever that may mean to some of you, they had it come out in the same exact position. 
So, you know, we have a lot of our light and dark coming out this month for Libra season because it is about balance. You know, so communicate, Gemini. Be honest about the two different sides of you. You know, we have the apple, the apple and the orange here, which are drastically different um, fruits. And then we have this white cat and this black cat. And this cat is looking this way and the black cat is looking that way. So this is really speaking to me about the duality that Gemini harnesses. The light, the dark, the masculine, the feminine, the good, the bad, the, the two twins, everything like that. And it's saying that this is on your side this month, Gemini. So really harness, you know, your differences. Because you are very different being the twin of the Zodiac. You know, I know that Pisces and Libra are dual signs as well. But you are very different. You have a twin. You have two of what you are. And I think that's because you're Virgo's sibling, okay, Mercury. Mercury rules Virgo, which is the virgin, the one. And Mercury also rules the twins, you know, you know which is kind of opposite energies. Like Mercury, being Virgo is, is the only sign that can create an energy by itself. Kind of like how the Virgin Mary, that's Virgo, virgin, Virgo, angel. Um, she created the baby Jesus or whatever without conception so angels are able to kind of produce energy without us usually you need two or more you know people or things to create something but virgo is the only sign that can create something out of nothing and they're ruled by mercury and you're ruled by mercury so it's kind of like where there was one there was two and there's a lot here about two of you the differences, you know, part of you being invisible, the high priestess of air communicating in two different ways or kind of being honest in, in two different ways. So we have your differences, okay? Literally the polarity, the, pol the polar opposites here. Spirit is saying that that's on your side this month. You know, this is the month for you to really let your freak flag fly and be two different people. Like, it's Halloween, you know what I mean? Like, what more... How more Gemini can it be? You know, like everyone dresses up and they play this kind of ulterior ego and it's more of dark energies, the mysterious, and this is fall, so everything's transforming. So yeah, Gemini, it's just a good time right now. It, you know, there's lots of reasons I could talk about, but I'm just feeling spirit saying, you know, Gemini, this is your month. Like October is a really cool month for you when it comes to your, your you know, duh, it's because Libra. It's because we're in a dual sign. It's because Libra has two scales. So, you know, Pisces and Gemini, we kind of get to kind of ride along with Libra in the month of October. And I guess a little bit of September, but October mainly. Because Libra is really strong. So it's kind of like this: the balance beam can hold one of my fish and the other fish. One of your twins and the other twin. So that's why Differences is coming up this month for you. And saying that this is on your side. Like, Spirit is totally rooting for you to embrace these two different sides of you right and to balance your light and dark this month with communication it might might help you to communicate a little bit um, in an invisible way and then on your side also like Taurus we have the warrior so you are like the communication warrior this month I'm seeing and this is the second card you see that two up there so it's about communicating with someone else I mean, you know, I talk to myself sometimes, and Jim and I, you know, you might talk to yourself too, but this is really, um, Spirit is talking about the kind of communication um, with a force, or with a certain source, um, or with a friend, or a partner, or, you know, to someone. Like, you are going to be amazed at some of the conversations that come up in the month of October because of how strong your communication is. So I'm seeing that you communicate in a different way, Jim and I. You know, that's why you're the high priestess of air. Um, you are very strong. You communicate in a very strong way. And it may be in a way where it's it's kind of like reading between the lines, okay? Because I'm seeing this invisible card here. And that you might be strong in a way because you're able to keep, you know, certain parts of you hidden at certain times. And not everybody's going to understand that, but, you know... That's why you're you're the light aspect of Mercury, so that you're able to explain that um, if you want to. And it's definitely the light and the dark. It's about being strong in a light way. It's about being strong in a dark way. Um, but being honest about that. No wonder honesty is here at the bottom of your reading. Because it's very important to be honest about 
things that you need to say. Now is not a time to keep what you feel and what you want to say hidden or invisible. I don't think that's what your reading is encouraging you to do. You're just going towards a place of invisibility. Invisibility is up here, your north node. So, you know, it's more so uh, coming from a place of honesty and or being honest about needing to leave, okay? That's what I just heard for some of you Geminis. Like, you're, you're, you're being honest in a way where you're speaking honestly and you're like, hey, you know, I just need to kind of go away for a while. I kind of just need to like, and people are gonna be like, where are you going? And you're like, well, like it doesn't really have a name it's like a portal and you maybe you don't want to tell people that you're going into a portal or that you're kind of leaving worlds or that you're kind of changing in a way but you know you have these differences about you Gemini and certain things are going to be left unsaid but you are a great communicator so I think people are still going to know what you meant and you may the reason why you, you don't really have a name for this place that you want to kind of go invisible about is because maybe you're not actually leaving you know I know as a Pisces I leave all the time mentally okay that's a very Gemini thing so you know maybe that was just meant for me to say to you but what I meant by that is not necessarily mentally I, I leave in my head you know when I, I meditate a lot that helps me kind of leave and feel different surroundings you know Gemini there is a subtle hint of that here in your reading but you're coming from a place of honesty you have the warrior your you your strength okay because warrior means strength to me and I'm seeing that you are very strong when it comes to your differences this month and I think it has a lot to do with that that Libra energy balancing you know you and those two twins that you have and there is a little bit of being here and not being here this month and i think it's a lot of balancing your twins balancing these two people that make up gemini this uh you know the masculine and the feminine with you because there is fragment here and there's obedience to this fragment so it's like libra season is really you know allowing you to be obedient in a way where you're finally okay with kind of not dropping the ball but just kind of being Maybe distant where you weren't before, you know, maybe actually being distant in your mind. But there is an obedience here with frag fragment. You know, some of you may be even oh, fragmenting your obedience to something, you know, because Gemini is very obedient to mental and Mercury and all these things that are in your reading, like being different and being two different people and being strong all the time and being honest. I think Gemini is actually a person like this could be true about your reading no matter what like if i'm reading for gemini it would never be a lie for honesty to be in yourself no because you guys like really don't give a fuck you're just going to be honest about what you feel you know you can't really help it if you have a gemini they say gemini is two-faced and i'm like well both faces are honest to me and I, it might be because i'm a, a, a mutable sign or a dual sign and i just kind of can then i have lilith in gemini as well so i kind of just know what a gemini feels and thinks most of the time and I just kind of vibe with them kind of well they pick on me a lot you guys pick on me a lot and um but that's fine it's like really cute to me and it kind of toughens me up I like when Gemini is honest and gives me criticism or kind of tells me something that other people wouldn't tell me it's like other people are afraid and Gemini isn't so you definitely have honesty there and I think that, that that's always true for you guys I think that you guys are pretty honest people and then we have the High Priestess of Fire as your overall guidance. So I feel like this is Aries full moon. Um, and I feel like this is overall guiding you. This is the a very passionate priestess. This is someone who's very, very fiery and, um, you know, reminds me of an Aries Leo Sagittarius energy. And all of those energies have passion in common. They keep this the flame ignited. Okay, and this is about expression. <clears throat> I don't want to forget to mention that this is definitely about expression. It's the fifth card and Leo is the fifth house See that number five up there Well, it's about it's about playfully expressing yourself throughout all these energies. So Playfully be honest, you know Gemini you may be put in a position this month Where you're put in, in an area in life where you just know certain things and you you, you just know how to say it and you have to be honest in a way so it's kind of like uh and you could play around with it 
you know, you could play around with honesty, not in a fake way or like in a way where you're kind of being honest, kind of not like, no, be honest all the way. But, you know, just apply this kind of fiery energy to it. I mean, this is a fiery candle being lit. So it's kind of like, you know, the high priestess of fire, it helped you. Maybe around this full moon in Aries, it kind of, I think that was in your 11th house, right? Because Taurus is your 12th house, Aries would be your 11th house. So it's about the people around you and the groups and the community that you're from. So you want to be honest with people around you. You want to be honest with um, the groups that you work with, the team, you know, Aquarius, the 11th house, you, they're all about community and humanitarianism. So you might, you know, you might be put in a position, you might not even understand why, like, why am I the one that has to be so honest? You might even have to be honest for other people. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if someone hit you up and was like, hey, can you like break the news to this guy for me? Like maybe a boss is like, hey, will you fire him for me? Or hey, will you like, I just feel like you're going to be put in the middle of a lot of secrets or something, Gemini. And that's why honesty is coming up for you. And it's because we're about to head into Scorpio season in October. So this reading is also for Scorpio season. And with all these secrets and things coming out with Pluto squaring the new moon in Libra and Pluto squaring the uh, full moon in Aries, you know, we have these harsh aspects. Uh, Pluto is all about kind of like the taboo kind of secrets deep down and Scorpio is also about that because it's Pluto rules Scorpio and Mars rules Scorpio so it's like aggression towards these secrets so you know Gemini uh, you know it's gonna be Scorpio season soon and I think you are gonna be put in a position of honesty like maybe the rest of us are going to be trying to kind of hide, you know, Pisces, Scorpio, water signs are going to try to like go underneath and hide things. But the air signs are just going to be communicating this shit. Like you're just going to really be communicating it in an honest way. So the high priestess of fire is talking about being strong in a passionate way. You have the high priestess of fire and the high priestess of air. That is an opposition. That is another form of opposites so it's awesome that you have differences and then you have the high priestess of air and fire so this could very much be the south and north node because the south node is in aquarius right now and the north node is in leo and i'm sorry you guys can't oh you can see it kind of you can see the fire girl and then the high priestess of air if i put her right there you should be able to see her kind of good but you have this fire and air opposition isn't that kind of cool so, you know, you're coming from a place of air, but you have fire backing you up. So what is fire and air? Like fire needs oxygen to stay ignited. So yeah, you're going to be putting the fire and the flames underneath communication. Cause, and it's weird that I say that because you have this, this kind of candle right underneath this high priestess of air. And it's kind of igniting her and flaming her fire to, to stay lit air and fire air and fire so there's something with that too gemini i'm not sure but it's the passion being brought to communication it's the passion and fire so let's go ahead and dive in here and um, see what some clarifiers about this so we're going to clarify the high priestess of air first um okay this card just popped out so i'm just going to go with it um it's the five of pentacles and that's interesting because it's the five of pentacles and the high priestess of air is the six card. So there's definitely some numerology here. Five of pentacles is, you know, poverty. It's these two people are really at a low, low point in their life. They're very left out in the cold, you know. So Gemini, you know, you could be kind of cold with your communication this month. You could be saying, you, you know, I, I, know, I see this with a lot of signs right now. We're just done with the bullshit. Like, we are literally transforming into people that are different. So, Gemini, you might not really be, like, really caring about what people think these these days. A lot of people could be feeling this way, like, left out in the cold, kind of like maybe you're not communicating with them. Or, you know, this is also poverty, but this is the card that Spirit chose to validate the High Priestess of Air. So, you know, there could be some people that you want to talk to, Gemini, that are... You know, communication is kind of cold. Um, when it comes to your communication, it could be kind of poor, like poverty. You know, this card is very poor and poverty, very cold and chilling. So, you know, for some Geminis out there, if you haven't been being as honest as you could be, or if you haven't been, there's the Aries card right underneath this uh, left out in the cold feeling. So make sure you're protecting the I am because Aries rules the I am. 
they're very, very um, individual. They, they protect the individuality in things. So speak from a place of individuality and make sure that you're not leaving your own self out in the cold by leaving certain things unsaid. Remember I said that in the reading that there are going to be certain things left unsaid. Well, you know, and here's these two people, Gemini. It's kind of like these are your two twins or something like that being left out in the cold. But as long as you communicate, you know, I'm not sure if we should get another clarifier on that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a clarifier on honesty first. And we'll see if we come back to that if we have time. Because that could mean very many things, okay? Just just beware of that five of pentacles. You know, certain communication being left out in the cold. Don't forget to say certain things. That's kind of a lying energy. like. And I only say that in this reading because honesty is down here. And if you're being left out in the cold when it comes to honesty or when it comes to communication, the high priestess of air, you know, then it could be kind of kind of like a lie, you know, lies, lies are kind of being left out in the cold. So let's get a um, clarifier for honesty, please, for Gemini, October. Let's get a clarifier, one card for that would best explain honesty. Okay, and we had the Emperor, I mean the Empress come out. The Empress card, I'm sorry guys, very, very glare. Um, the Empress card is like a Taurus energy, you can see the Venus symbol here. So, you know, we do have Venus entering Libra on the 14th, and Libra is an air sign. So, Libra, Venus entering Libra, Libra being ruled by Venus, you know, it's definitely going to be giving air signs a certain kind of one-up when it comes to love. Love is definitely on the way. Be honest about what you love. And this is where you're coming from. So, you're coming from a place of love. You're coming from a place of Venus, you know, coming from a place of kind of like communicating in a loving way, some of you. And there's a very burning, passionate flame that's being lit. So, you know, and this is the Empress being ruled here. So love is very, you know, you want to be passionate and you want to be honest about what you love and who you love and, and loving the way that you speak. And, you know, a lot of passion here, a lot of love and stuff like that. And I just pulled the Cancer card. So I'm not sure if some of you Geminis are, you know, interested in a Cancer or maybe it's just the light and the dark again because there's the light and the dark in this card. So yeah, we definitely got the hot, the empress for honesty. So be, you know, you're going to be the empress of honesty. You're going to be the emperor of honesty in such a strong position. Like you're going to communicate, you're going to be honest in a loving way. This card is also about all of the elements, all of the feelings, um, you know, the senses I mean, because Taurus, Taurus rules the five senses. So it's like, you're going to be able to be honest in a way that you could kind of touch on all the five senses so like people can hear honesty they can see honesty i mean i don't really know what honesty tastes like but you know you know <laughs> you're just going to be really touching touching on a lot of you're going to be being honest in every sense of the way is what i'm trying to say and then i also pulled the full card just now i kind of opened up to it so there's a new beginning here with love and there's a new beginning here um and there's a cell at three of oh the Three of Cups just came out with the Seven of Pentacles, so there could be kind of like some celebration going on with yourself about what you've kind of harvested around this time. So let's get a clarifier for the invisible. And the world card just almost showed itself to me, so I'm going to go with that, Gemini. So are you invisible to the world right now? Are you feeling invisible? You know, this is a very fixed energy. This is good luck, though. This is good luck about being invisible. Sorry, there's a glare. But yeah, Gemini, this is pretty interesting here that you have the world card, um, you know, as a clarifier for this invisibility. You, you could be kind of going ghost. Um, you know, it is Halloween. You could be kind of going ghost. Um, and it's, as far as communicating with the world, maybe you communicate a lot. Um, I just pulled the Wheel of Fortune card. Also, my subconscious did. So there's a lot of changes here with the with cancer so there's like light and dark kind of changing for you gemini um in in the world a lot of luck changing for you right now and you know if that was happening for me i would also want to be a bit invisible so i see gemini kind of coming from a place of love and everything and what i was going to say is if you communicate a lot and often you might be feeling guilty about kind of going behind the scenes here and I, here's the Libra card as well but 
you know, you might be feeling kind of behind the scenes. You might not, you might be kind of want to, you were honest about something and now you're invisible. Like you could have been even honest about your whole world changing right now. And then I just pulled the Sagittarius card. So, you know, there is some very opposite energies going on here. Sagittarius, come on now, buddy. Um, and it's about balance also. And it's so weird. I have the Leo card. Wow. Okay, Gemini, I got to show you this. Because I see the King of Wands here. Do you see how my hands kind of just did that? King of Wands, Temperance, and the Strength card. So there's like a lot of fire in your reading, a lot of fire in air. So we have Leo and Sagittarius and the King of Wands, all fire, fire, fire. No wonder the High Priestess of Fire is kind of like backing you up. So, you know, and with the Sagittarius card, it also means balance between, you know, your intuition and reality. Um, it's balancing this. It's balancing being invisible to the world. So whatever that means to you, Jeremiah, I'm going to encourage you to leave. Like, if you want to leave, if you want to go somewhere and be invisible for a while, whether it's just kind of turning off your phone for days or not, not doing YouTube broadcasts or posting every day, you know, like, oh, well, I know you're a communication sign, but you, like, literally don't have to communicate with people. Just do it in an honest way. Like, literally, if you do it in a passionate and an honest way, anything you decide to do this month is going to be okay. So let's get a card for differences. Differences in the world today, baby. Differences. I don't know what this song is that I'm singing. I'm literally just singing it. Okay. So we have the Five of Wands. Same card came out for Taurus. I'm sorry, this is not the Five of Wands. This is the Seven of Wands. I always do this. Seven of Wands. I mean, and here you go. I guess for some of you Gemini Tarot readers, you would have been able to know that I meant the Seven of Wands. Um, okay, so we have this clarifying differences. And what, is this, what does this card mean? It means be someone who's on top, but has a lot of competition because of he's on top. Um, and, you know, I feel like all of this has to do with communication, Gemini, because at the bottom of my deck right now we have the ace of swords right this is very very uh swift communication this is communication growing for you and then beneath that we have the death card okay so your communication is really transforming this month that's the kind of energy that i had the feeling of transformation for gemini light and dark you know we have the devil card underneath that so you need to kind of break away from subconscious things when it comes to communication maybe certain people who you know you can't really communicate that well with it's gonna be time to either apply this ace of swords to them but i feel like these are all conversations gemini like that's what i'm seeing right now is like there's gonna be a lot of harsh conversations or like just different conversations i guess um and it's interesting that i say that because this is about the difference card so there's a lot of different energies around you and there's a lot of different conversations that are going to take place in the month of October and no wonder you're coming from a place of honesty because there's a lot of people to be honest too and you know it's very different it's about staying on top with your differences as well staying on top with your light and dark staying on top with these people who are trying to knock you down and I'm pulling the wheel of fortune card again so this is all changing for you Gemini this is a new version of yourself that is very much coming to light with this Aries moon and then, okay, so for Warrior, we have the Hierophant and the two of, wand, two of Wands. So this is a very traditional thing, okay? This is like trying to plan for your future in a very traditional way. Both of these people are kind of in between uh, pillars. He's in between two Wands, and, and the Hierophant is always in between these two pillars here. This is a Taurus energy, okay? Some of you may be with a Taurus. Some of you Gemini and Taurus may be linking up. Um, but remember, Venus was kind of popular. And I'm also being led to these kind of bald-headed little baby boys down here. <laughs> My, every time I read for you guys, when I see two of something, it just reminds me of your twins, okay? I'm sorry if that irritates you, but it's just my intuition. And, you know, this is kind of a stubborn energy. I'm seeing the bulls here. So you might need to be kind of stubborn about what you believe in traditionally. You know, the tradition is very much coming up here in your reading. And it comes out with the, the planning for future. This is like 
you know, with this card, I'm always led to say either you're going to stay where you are and be comfortable or you're going to go somewhere uncomfortable but grow so much because of it. And, you know, this is validating the world card. And I told you that it has a number two up there. And anytime there's a two, it means kind of sharing it with another person. So, you know, you're, you're thinking about someone sharing your world. This is futuristic planning and goals. You know what I mean? And you're, you're thinking about doing that. And, and Gemini, I'm also led to tell you right here before I go, is, you know, you're in a place and position of advice right now. You're in a very, very, very uh, important position of advice. And it might be stubborn advice. It might be headstrong advice. But just apply passion to it, okay? There's a lot to do with fire and air in your reading this month. So I'm seeing that you're going to have a lot of energy to keep going, 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 like, you know, air replenishes fire the same way that water replenishes earth. You know, we have opposites here. We have a lot of polarity and duality in your in your reading, and I love that. Just be careful not to lose yourself in all of it, okay? You have to stay obedient. You have to remain obedient to the, to the, the purpose and to the calling this month because it's very real in the month of October, okay? This is like, this time is very important because everything's starting over. And, you know, you would think that everyone would be on board to start over, but we often hold on to things that are no longer serving us because we've just done something so long. We've done something a certain way for so long that we don't really see a point in changing it now. And for you, it may be communication. It may be that you have, you know, communicated in, in such a traditional way for so long that you don't really see the need to change it so don't be stubborn in that way um especially when it comes to you know the how you communicate in the future i'm not sure if you can see these cards as i show them to you but i'm really trying here um i definitely feel your energy i feel that you're strong enough to be this this position this this taurus energy you know so some of you gemini's may even have taurus energy um, in you, okay, because I'm seeing that, that you might have earth in your chart, because this card came out, it's very earthy, because we have this, uh, this guy here holding that earth in his hand, so the world is in your hand, Gemini, and, uh, I mean, oh my goodness, it definitely is, like, I, I didn't even notice that before, but I love when these cards come out together, the world card, so you, you are holding the world in your hand, and, you know, it's the two of wands, so it's a very passionate energy as well, there's a lot of fire here, we have the two of wands and remember that this is on your side so tradition is on your side and future planning is on your side so spirit is encouraging you and protecting you to kind of this is your foundation as well so where there was poverty before gemini and um where there was stubbornness before you know it might even be beneficial for you to be a little stubborn right now um it's also on your side to battle and to hold your ground like this is actually it's so cool that these cards mean foundation and he's kind of like trying to stay grounded on his foundation and just don't ignore those fire signs because a lot of fire signs here a lot a lot of fire signs you might have fire on your side air and fire so i'm not sure if you have any air or fire signs in your groups of friendships and stuff like that but you know you definitely have the warrior traditional warriors on your side you know you're going to be future planning and of course there's going to be battles may even battle with your opposite twin this month a little bit but it's okay because you have the high priestess of fire to really keep lighting this fire for you gemini and i think this is about as far as i'm able to enter your subconscious right now and to tell you the truth this is my energy as well very uh takes a lot of energy to do this kind of thing at the bottom of your deck though we do have the ten of pentacles gemini so there's such a completion happening here and there's definitely some new beginnings happening with work and maybe even some love offers i'm seeing with the you know the page of cups got the king of cups and things like that so yeah gemini definitely uh and then beneath the ten of pentacles wow like you literally have so much fire dude like we have the Ten of Pentacles, and then we also have the King and Knight of Wands. So tell me that there's fire in your life, because there's like so much fire in your reading. It might just mean that you are on fire, because you just have so much fire, guys. I mean, wow. But 
I mean, ain't nothing wrong with it. I love fire. Fire is like very passionate and, and expressive. So express all this stuff. Express what's going on to with you in October. Express it in an honest way. Express it in a loving way. Stay on top. Honor your differences. The world is yours. Never mind this uh, poor poverty feeling with communication. You might have been left out in the cold. You might have left someone else out in the cold. But the world is yours. And you're headed towards your future, Gemini. And I really hope this reading was beneficial to you guys. Um, I really appreciate your comments and your likes and things like that. Your, your positive feedback, even your negative feedback. I love you guys. Your twins. I love how honest you are. So... Let me know what you thought about this reading. Um, I certainly hope it was relatable and helpful to you in, in some way or another. So uh, it is a general reading though. So some of you gems might be out there on a totally different level. But I see lots of passion. I see lots of fire. I see lots of air, communication. And I see a lot of good stuff. So have a wonderful October. Turn up for Halloween. Um, kind of maybe try to access that other twin of yours and play some dress up. You know, things like that. And I think it'll be very, very, very fun. I hope it is for you guys. And we will talk again in November sometime when it is Scorpio season. <laughs> Bye, guys.